Welcome to Nursing Prep. Push yourself in nursing preparation with smart way. Practice this quiz on www.thestudyblog.com. Health promotion and maintenance. Which nursing intervention would be a priority during the care of a two-month-old after surgery? Option A. Minimize stimuli for the infant. Option B. Restrain all extremities. Option C. Encourage stroking of the infant. Option D. Demonstrate to the mother how she can assist with her infant's care. Right answer is. Option C. Encourage stroking of the infant. Tactile stimulation is imperative for an infant's normal emotional development. After the trauma of surgery, sensory deprivation can cause failure to thrive. The nurse should recognize that all of the following physical changes of the head and face are associated with the aging client except Option A. Pronounced wrinkles on the face Option B. Decreased size of the nose and ears Option C. Increased growth of facial hair Option D. Neck wrinkles Right answer is Option B. Decreased size of the nose and ears the nose and ears of the aging client actually become longer and broader. The chin line is also altered. Wrinkles on the face become more pronounced and tend to take on the general mood of the client over the years. For example, laugh or frown wrinkles about the eyebrows, lips, cheeks, and outer edges of the eye orbit. The change in the androgen-estrogen ratio causes an increase in growth of facial hair in most older adults. The aging process shortens the platysma muscle, which contributes to neck wrinkles. Which of the following materials would the graduate nurse require to test the function of a patient's glossopharyngeal nerve? Option A. Soft cotton swab and a toothpick. Option B. A stethoscope. Option C. Tongue depressor. Option D. A handheld mirror. Right answer is. Option C. Tongue depressor. The glossopharyngeal nerve can be tested for function by assessing gag reflex. The tongue depressor checks gag reflex. A nurse works with four patients at an outpatient health center. Which of the patients most concerns the nurse? Option A. A 36 years slash African American male who has been trying to eat a healthier diet. Option B. A 50 years slash Asian female who weighs 100 pounds and is 5 feet in height. Option C. A 50 years slash Caucasian male who has been weight lifting at the gym two times per week. Option D. A 24 years slash Caucasian woman who enjoys swimming on a daily basis. Right answer is. Option B. A 50 years slash Asian female who weighs 100 pounds and is 5 feet in height. Although each of the above patients is healthy, the one who is most at risk for problems in the future is the postmenopausal Asian woman who has little bone mass. She is very susceptible to osteoporosis. The nurse supervises care of a client who is receiving enteral feeding via an azogastric tube. The nurse determines that care is appropriate if which of the following is observed. Option A. The nursing assistant checks the residual and records it before returning it to the patient. Option B. The nursing assistant elevates the head of the bed approximately 15 degrees during the tube feeding. Option C. The nursing assistant listens for a puff of air in the patient's stomach to check tube placement. Option D. The nursing assistant uses a stethoscope to listen for bowel sounds. Right answer is. Option A. The nursing assistant checks the residual and records it before returning it to the patient. The head of the bed must be elevated sufficiently to decrease the risk of aspiration. 15 degrees is not enough. Listening for a puff of air is not as accurate as an X-ray or pH assessment. Residuals should be returned to patients via tubes, always. The nursing assistant cannot perform assessments and therefore isn't qualified to listen to bowel sounds. A client receives a PPD test. He returns to the clinic 24 hours later and shows the inoculated arm, which has no induration or redness. 
Which of the following statements, if made by the nurse, is a correct interpretation of the results? Option A. This is a negative result. We will follow up with a chest x-ray to be sure. Option B. This is a negative result. I will mark it in your chart. Option C. This is a positive reaction. I will refer you for further evaluation. Option D. You will need to return in another day for me to correctly assess the site. Right answer is. Option D. You will need to return in another day for me to correctly assess the site. No need for a chest x-ray unless the PPD tests positive. This is neither a positive nor a negative result. PPD tests cannot be read until it has been 48 to 72 hours. The nurse works in an outpatient sexual health clinic. A patient asks the nurse what the absolute method is to prevent pregnancy. The nurse knows that the absolute method is Option A. Abstinence Option B. Condoms Option C. Religion Option D. Coitus interruptus Right answer is Option A. Abstinence Abstinence is the only method 100% guaranteed to prevent pregnancy. A student nurse interns at an outpatient health center. Which of the following responsibilities of the student nurse are considered tertiary prevention strategies? Option A. The student nurse administers a PPD test for employment. Option B. The student nurse prepares a sterile field before cleaning the inner cannula of a tracheostomy. Option C. The student nurse gives back trim to a patient with a UTI. Option D. The student nurse gives a presentation on diet and exercise. Right answer is. Option C. The student nurse gives back trim to a patient with a UTI. The flu vaccine, the sterile field, and the presentation on diet slash exercise are examples of primary prevention. The PPD test is secondary prevention. Giving Bactrim and giving acyclovir are examples of tertiary prevention. A patient with rheumatoid arthritis complains to the nurse that exercise is very painful for her. What does the nurse recommend to the patient? Option A. Use ice packs on the joints that hurt after you exercise. Option B. Try taking a warm bath in the morning before you begin your exercise. Option C. Do not exercise if your joints hurt. Instead, try again the next day. Option D. I'm sure it doesn't hurt that much to exercise, right? Right answer is. Option B. Try taking a warm bath in the morning before you begin your exercise. Exercise will always be painful for a patient with rheumatoid arthritis, but if they skip exercise, they can develop contractures. Warm baths and heating pads can help to loosen and relax joints for better function with less pain in exercise. The home health nurse visits a patient with HIV who lives alone in her apartment. Which of the following observations the nurse makes while in the patient's home is most concerning? Option A. The dishwasher is broken and the patient complains that she has low water pressure throughout the whole apartment. Option B. The patient has a cat who purrs loudly. Option C. The patient has a bowl of fake fruit on the table. Option D. There is an open container of food in the refrigerator. Right answer is. Option B. The patient has a cat who purrs loudly. The open container of food in the refrigerator needs to be addressed, but the cat is more concerning. The cat's feces could contain toxoplasmosis, an organism dangerous to immunocompromised patients. Thanks for watching. You can also practice this quiz on www.thestudyblog.com link in description box. If you have any doubt ask in comment section and you like our video then do like, comment, share. Subscribe our channel for regular updates.